That's good. Ah, where is it at? Huh? There you are. Oh, what's up, guys? It's the Michael. I'm here in 1937. How are you guys doing? In case you can't see the background screen here, um, today I will be reviewing Hyrule Warriors. Yes, this game. I've been waiting for this game actually for a while now. And if you guys have actually seen my videos that I put on YouTube, just little impressions of me playing this game. Hopefully you will actually like it and watch it. Hopefully you'll watch this video. And this is my review of Hyrule Warriors that's on the Wii U exclusively. And let me just say right now, um, I didn't have the highest expectations for this game actually. I had like medium expectations. And when I play the game, I'm having fun. And I'm still having fun to this day. Now what in the world is basically Hyrule Warriors? Well, if you never play it, well, let's talk about the Dynasty Warriors series. Basically that mixed with the Zelda skin. But it's a good piece of skin because it works perfectly. In case you don't know, this is um, developed by Tecmo Koi Games and Team Ninja. The team behind the Ninja Gaiden series and the Dead or Alive series and the Dynasty Warriors series. See a ring here? That they worked on uh, warrior type of games. And warrior games are usually hack and slash, ultimate, slashing out millions of so warriors until they die, basically. And that's how what it is here. I mean, this is just basically Dynasty Warriors with a Zelda. Now that may seem generic or a horrible attempt to try to sell out on the Zelda franchise, right? Well guess what? It's not a sellout. It actually is a great piece of worth of 60 bucks in my opinion. I mean, I really do love this game. It's a great game. It's worth playing. But it isn't perfect. I will say that. But let's get into what makes this game good. Alright, let's just start with the story. And if you guys have ever played the Ninja Gaiden series, like what Team Ninja developed before, you can tell that their stories are a little bit out of control, kooky, and ridiculous. Over at the top uh, to level 9000, basically. Ridiculous. ridiculous right? Well, the story here is not actually over ridiculous at all, actually. It's actually actually a cool story. Um, so basically, it starts off with Zelda getting nightmares of an evil dark force coming in to destroy Hyrule and to make a new enemy. Basically, Zelda uh, Link encounters Zelda and basically helps her. And while doing that, an evil force decides to split open timelines from other memorable Zelda games. So in this in white text, I hope it ain't spoiling too much. But the timelines that you'll be encountering is three classic games that I think people will know of. One is definitely Ocarina of Time because they're the best game of this series of Legend of Zelda. Number two is Skyward Sword, the recently released Zelda game for Wii 2011. And Twilight Princess, basically um, the game before Skyward Sword. It's basically, recently a lot of people call it a darker remake of Ocarina of Time. Now, I never got a chance to actually play that game. But one day, I will, I can try that game out. So, I've never really been a big Zelda fan because I never actually got into it when I was younger. But I started getting into it now, more often, with the few games that's been coming out. And I'm really getting into it as this is kind of an experiment for Nintendo. And this experiment, in my opinion, pays off enticingly. Especially with the fact that the story actually makes sense and it isn't over the top, ridiculously dramatic. And the story actually moves off on a great pacing too. I mean, it's nothing bad, and there's no really any bad parts of the story. The story also includes some new characters to, for mythology to build on. Most importantly, a new character named Lana, who basically is a sorcerer uh, warrior, which who can actually use her book to use sorcery magic, and that's kind of a cool character. There's also um, basically other characters that you can play as in the game as um, Darunia, who is the big uh, guy with the hammer that you will see in the game. Uh, you can also play as the Twilight Princess herself, Midna, and tons of other characters that you wish you could have played in the original game. And that's like moving into gameplay, but story-wise here, it's actually really well done here. It actually makes sense, and it actually pays off well in the end. But the only problem with the story I have with it is the fact that this game does not have voice acting. Yes, I know it's nostalgic, and I'm, I don't mind it in the other Zelda games. It's a Zelda game that Nintendo developed. But when a game like this has cutscenes, and these cutscenes have moving animations, and these characters are talking with their mouth, and no voices come out, it's jarring. Dark <laughs> <laughs> 
hit the head of the moment. We'll keep it until that time. If that is indeed true, we must locate him. Here, as in the green tube of the sky. It takes you. It takes me out of it personally, for my own personal, like not personal, but my own reasons. For some reason, I don't know why, but I feel like there should be voice acting at least for this game. You'll find no you fully realized heroes here. No one here. You guys are looking somewhere else. Dang, I'm one hit in the head? Badass. I like classic badass. Others, like Zelda games, main storyline Zelda games, like the new one kind of for Wii U, maybe you don't need voice acting for that. I'll accept that. But try to add something for this, I mean, because in the cutscenes, when they're supposed to be talking, all they do is grunt, moan, and groan. That's how they talk the entire time. And Link doesn't even say a word. And I'm fine with that. He's a silent character, a silent uh, fighter. He's been silent throughout the entire series. I mean, I don't think I ever heard him, I haven't seen text of him talking. As the game tells the story through text dialogue. And what's weird is in some of the loading screens or transition screens of story campaign, there's actual voice acting of a narration. But they couldn't get voice actors for the characters of Link, Zelda, and more other characters that show up in the game. It's kind of a problem, I think. It's, it feels like it's trying to like respect the Zelda lore, but then when it comes to trying to be more realistic, it goes turns it right around. It's kind of just kind of drawing, I think. I wish they actually had voice acting in this game. Now, the campaign itself isn't really bad in length. I mean, it's not no six hours long, and it's not no four hours long, which is a great thing for me. For me personally, it took me around 10 hours to actually beat the campaign as you can't just go as the game actually spreads through story paths. There's no choices or consequences here, but you have to do like every single level in order to pass. So you can't just do like, if one level pisses you off, you just got to suck it up and deal with it. And that isn't a real big problem as you can unlock more weapons for your characters. So story-wise, it's amazing, but it also suffers from lack of voice acting. That's the only problem with the game. Now let's get into graphics. As they was gonna say, how does it graphically look? How does it visually look amazing? Well, it actually looks really well done for a Zelda game. Um, it actually looks great. The visually, it looks amazing. I believe it's at 1080p. I'm not a graphic core, so I don't give a damn about it or a frame rate for it. And it looks amazing. You can see how it, the draw distance of the area, like when you're running towards it, is amazing. <coughs> God. I gotta try for a second. And the frame rate is smooth most of the time. I say most of the time because for some reason, whenever you're, like, you're attacking and slashing too much, the game will actually play in slow motion for a few seconds. But after those few seconds, the game gets right back into action and the frame rate stays smooth for a little bit more time. These frame rate drops only happen every once in a while, maybe like for a few seconds. But these things were never too much to ruin the entire experience for me. They were never enough. And the animations actually itself are cool, so that's a good thing. And the, thanks to the animations is due to the gameplay. Now, how is the gameplay? Now, if you guys ever played a Dynasty Warriors game, you know that it can be repetitive. And there's so many enemies, and basically no one can stand a chance against you because you're an almighty hero made to destroy everyone that's in your path. Like all these warriors. None of these warriors actually stand a chance against these enemies, right? That's good. So, when it comes to gameplay, it's repetitive, yes, but it's repetitive in a good way, as in the game series has always been repetitive. So when it comes to that, it's really has great enemy variety, as in yes, you'll be fighting normal guys that you can hit in two slices, and they'll end up dead flopping on the ground. But you'll also be fighting other bigger type of enemies that have a certain pattern you have to do, or wait for them to strike their strike, and their weak spot opens up, and their weakness uh, wakens up. And you can hit them and slash them to death, which is amazing. And it's amazing to see that there also is also multiple weapons you can use. So each character can get two, three, or four weapons. Link right now can get the most weapons in the game. He has a sword, a high sword, 
Um, I also got him a magic rod. You can also get him more weapons like the gauntlet with his hand. It has a metal hand. He starts swinging a gigantic ball around from the Super Mario game, which is kind of cool. And other characters can also get other weapons, like Zelda can get the Wind Waker, which is also amazing to use. It's amazing how diverse the actual gameplay is, and each character has a different feel to them, as each character has a different combo system and unlocking skill tree. As you can actually upgrade these characters, while you don't have to grind through hours and hours and force to replay the character you don't like the most or anything. And like I said, there's multiple characters here. There's a ton of them. There's basically like 12 or 12 for, for right now as a deal. Um, 12 right now without any DLC. There's basically Link, Zelda, Midna, Impa, Fee, which is the goddess sword that Link encounters in Skyward Sword. Uh, you can even play as enemies in this game, which is also bad. So you can even play as the evil demon lord Ganondorf. Or you can fight as Girihi or Zant. Or you can even fight as um, even this weird little character called Agatha, the Princess of the Insects. Um, I haven't unlocked her yet because you have to do an unlocking system, which is kind of cool. And you can even play as Ruto, the goddess um, Zora Queen, the uh, Zora Princess of the Water. And her moves are awesome. Actually, all the moves, actually, characters moves are amazing. And each one has diversity, which is amazingly well done as it never gets boring way too fast. That's like one of the best parts of the gameplay is, is that the spectacle is always amazing and it's like great quality of action. But then there's always a little problem that holds it back. For example, boss battles. While the boss battles have great spectacle, especially the imprisoned boss battle, which is this gigantic creature that's like walking around slowly, and it's like walking around, you can't really see its arms, or you can see its big feet, its wobbly feet. While they're amazingly visually impressive, the actual mechanics and thinking to actually defeat these boss battles isn't really as amazing as in the Zelda games because they're basically just damage sponges. You can't really hit them until you weaken them or done a pattern and then you have to just hack and slash your way through them. That's kind of disappointing. As in my opinion, they're kind of a, not a weak homage, but just homage in general just to put into the game because it's a Zelda game. That's how I feel about the boss battles in my opinion. While some boss battles were tons of fun, especially the last boss battle, which I won't spoil for this review, but some other boss battles, while I have great spectacle, they just don't have a lot of... The, the way to defeat these bosses is just dull. It's just like any other game, we just like start hacking and slashing at their feet, but it won't affect them until you really do some damage to them is kind of annoying and and for each character each character has this awesome super finisher which they can do if they take if they beat up enough enemies and when they do it, it as great spectacle as you can see their carnage as they like destroy multiple enemies and they just like kill all of them it's amazing and that's really one of the best parts now when it comes to how you can play the game there's actually three ways to play actually number one is obviously the gamepad which am I play? I played most of the game in. Number two is, hang on, get it? The Wii U Pro Controller. And the last one is, I don't have it with me right now, but the last uh, way to play this game is actually with the Wii U Mode and Run Chuck. Um, I never actually got a chance to actually play with it that much. I only played it for like a few minutes or so. But I have to say, from my personal opinion, if I were to recommend a way to play Hyrule Warriors, I definitely recommend going with the gamepad. Basically, the fact that I felt like I had a lot more fun playing with the gamepad. You know, it was a lot more easier for me to actually do the moves and all the combinations and all that. It was a lot more easier for me. I don't know about you guys, but it was good for me to do it. So I gotta say about that. Ooh, my back is tight. Jesus, never mind. Let's just get on with it. Let's see what else I have to say. Ooh, yeah. There's also an awesome adventure mode. And what this adventure mode is, is basically a great throwback to the original Legend of Zelda. Basically, it's just like. It, the gamepad basically opens up a grid system. And so I like Legend of Zelda where it's like boxes or piles you have to do. And in these boxes, you have to do multiple objectives and challenges. And sometimes you're limited to doing this with certain characters. Like, for example, you have to play maybe a Spee and you have to kill mm, like 100 enemies. Like, no, 100. 500 enemies in 10 minutes. And the enemies of the levels will increase levelly. The levels will increase highly. 
and these can actually unlock new characters for you to play as, like Girahim, Zant, Agatha, and Ruto. That's all that's unlockable, and actually a few weapons that you can't get in the campaign are unlockable here. So it's basically, if you want the full experience and a full way to play it, you have to play Adventure Mode. And it's a lot of fun to actually do it. For you challenges. It's even a challenge mode where you have to do like the course craziest challenges if you really are up for it with certain characters just like the adventure mode. But the adventure mode is a lot more different because you basically unlock stuff that's actually worth it. Um, free mode is basically just like a, a legendary mode, which is campaign mode. But you can pick any character you want from the beginning. So let's say for the first level, you play as Link only. But if you want to do free mode, you can basically beat the game, you can play as Ganondorf, and you can kill everyone like that. But cutscenes still stay the same way. There's no different scenario or no different cutscene. So that's all that's happening there. Um, and then the last part of this experience, well actually there's two parts left. But the last part of this experience is basically two player split screen mode. Now there's actually no split screen. What happens is one player plays on this big boy, and the other one plays on the gigantic TV above me. Now. Now this is actually a cool idea to do games in the future. I actually like this, and actually this is one of the reasons why I actually like the gamepad. It's a great thing, but it suffers from a few minor things and a few major things. Number one, there is no online mode at all. So if I want, if my buddy and me got we owe Hyrule Warriors, we can go online. And we can't sit together and play the campaign together by playing as two different characters. No. You have to basically get a buddy to jump on your couch and play locally. No, I'm fine with that. But I like to see, for me, I like, I, like, I like to have the option. Like, for example, Mario Kart 8 gives me an option to play either with my brothers or with my friends online. Unfortunately, I can't do that because parties are scrap. But still, I'm giving a choice. This doesn't give you a choice. It restricts you, and I don't like that. Another thing that holds me down the wrong way is when you put it on the gamepad, the resolution slightly drops. It never drops too much. It slightly drops a little bit. And there's limitations on visibility. Like, for some reason, when I do a finisher and my brother's playing on the TV, he won't see it at times for some reason. Or there might be frame rate drops throughout the entire experience. Frame rate drops that might drop, like, rapidly on both versions. Well, so if I play here and there, the, the frame rate will drop at the exact same time. But it did, like I say, these frame rate drops never happen too much. It never bothers me all the way to me say, oh, I'm gonna give this game a low score. No, it never bothers me that much. Now, the final thing I really have to say about that two-player mode is basically, it's passive. It's a good uh, two-player mode experience if I have an extra controller that my big brother wants to play with me. That's a good thing. But it's a sad thing that these developers didn't really put all um, ideas in it, and they didn't let it be free. Why didn't they actually let us play with our buddies online? I mean, that's why there's a Nintendo network for a reason, right? Come on. Maybe when they do a sequel for this, which I really do hope for, maybe they can do it. And may I just say right now, a lot of people are actually telling me that the music isn't really good in this game, but I don't give a damn. I actually fell in love with the music as soon as the game starts. The music is amazingly... It's a great homage to the Legend of Zelda series, but not only that, some of the soundtracks actually have some really good rock and roll, heavy metal, like death metal, not death metal, but heavy metal, rock and roll, pop type of theme to it. And it's amazing. The music, in my opinion, is some of the best music. It doesn't beat other Zelda games because their music is outstanding. I don't want fanboys to start stabbing with it, stabbing me with their Kokiri swords. Okay? Ooh, so, also that, there's also going to be DLC coming soon with the Hero of Hyrule pack that you can buy day one. The pack is 20 bucks, but this pack is not just like one or two packs of DLC, no. You actually will get Dark Link as soon as you buy the pack. You'll, there'll be a DLC coming out in October, November, and actually all the way through May. So that this DLC pack actually is a cool idea because it gives you a lot of DLC for a certain amount of price. That's a cool idea. I'm fine with it. Actually, I might gotta buy the DLC really, really soon. I'm not gonna buy it right now because I'm dealing with my own money. Well, I'm not gonna I'm not dealing with my own money, but I'm saving my money up, basically. That's what I gotta say. So, 
I basically said everything. Music is amazing. Action, gameplay is amazing. Frame rate drops every once in a while. Story is amazing. Graphically, it looks good and it looks fine. And it's a great experiment of the Zelda series. I want, I want Nintendo to basically look at this game, the Zelda series, and you see just do more experiments, do more ideas. Do this with Mario, do with Metroid, Star Fox, Pikmin, do something. And I really hope that this game basically is a, is a, a wake up call for Nintendo to not just say, let's like do more experiments, let's have more developers join us. They really make good games that are definitely worth it in the end. The final verdict of Hyrule Warriors is an overall score of an 8.5 out of 10. That is my overall verdict of this game. I had tons of fun with this game. It suffers from limitations of the two player mode, the frame rate drops every once in a while, and basically the visibility of some of the action and dull boss battles. And also the fact that there's no real voice acting in the game. Come on. I mean, I know it's like almost 30 years of the Zelda series, but can we have that voice acting for once? Come on. I hope this game does actually well, so Tech McCoy Games and Team Ninja can make another game just like this for the Zelda series and for Nintendo. Because Nintendo really needs it, in my opinion. They really need to sell this game and so we use in general. So overall, guys, that's all I gotta say for right now. I really did um, love this game. Overall, I recommend it. It's one of those Wii U get titles that's really unexpected and, it's, and it's determined to be really, really bad with critics. But in my opinion, it's worth the 60 bucks. And if you want to buy it at 50, you can do that. Or 40, 30, go ahead. Just buy it whenever you can because this is worth it. This isn't going to sell the Wii U, I know that. But it's definitely going to help improve that some games should be made for the Wii U. That's all I got to say, guys. So that's it for this review, guys. I hope you actually like this video. Comment below. And subscribe. Also follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Name on Facebook is Michael Martinez. Name on Twitter is TheMichaelM1927. Hope you guys actually enjoy this. And I'll see you guys on the next episode of TheMichaelM1997. Bye bye.